All right, so how's it going, everybody? Today, I wanted to make a quick little video because when I originally started making like fishing videos, I always wanted to do some kind of thing that was like from the fit, like table, from the sea to the table or something like that, where like I caught each kind of fish and like cooked it. I don't know, I figured I'd do it with this snook because last night I caught it and uh, off a of buddy's dock. And also recently, these nuts wanted to see a fish cooking and cleaning video so it works out perfectly hope your dream comes true but then i got back home at three o'clock in the morning and i was like i don't want to i don't want to do this right now so i saved it till today and i didn't have any video of it because apparently i didn't charge my gopro up from the last time i used it so i couldn't use that plus it was really dark out also it was about a two second fight of where i put the mullet down and literally lifted the snook out of the water onto the dock. So it would, it would have been like a four second long video. Yeah, I didn't record any of it, unfortunately, but yeah, I got a nice 32 inch fish, which is at the top of the slot limit. So that's pretty good, pretty pumped about that. And then uh, my other buddy I was fishing with also got a 32 inch fish. So that was pretty perfect. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna show you, I guess, how to fillet a snook, which most almost all fish, there's like not really any difference. So. Uh, how to fillet it and I'm gonna grill it up so I guess I'll show some of that. This is gonna be a delicious fish and for some reason I feel I, I don't know is a uh, would timid be the right word for some reason like filleting fish people always get like really nervous or, or like I don't know if they just don't want to get fishy or <laughs> I mean understandable uh, or like they're like nervous to do it or something but it's like it's really not that big of a deal so got uh, I, I've used this knife for I don't even know how many years. I've had like three of them because sometimes you lose them. Uh, these Forstner knives, uh, I like them a lot. I have no idea what the name of, does this have a number on it? I think it's got a number. Hopefully you can, I can't even see the screen. Uh, hopefully the number, I think that would be the number 40616, maybe. I don't know. If not, if you're interested in whatever number, comment and I'll look it up or something <laughs> but uh yeah quick easy knife sharpening if you don't know how to do it uh rough side I like these little sharpening snow things make sure you're doing it away from yourself that's the cue because you don't want to cut yourself so you go down oh can't really see so you go down I like a little bit of an angle flip it come back up so it's kind of hard to cut yourself. I mean, I guess you could still probably do it somehow. Do a little bit on the rough side, smooth side, and should be good. I like to rinse it off. I don't want that crap getting in there. Um, yeah, back to what I was what I was saying. I guess timid would be the right word. I think it's the proper use of it. But I don't know what it is. It's like not that big of a deal. Like, I mean, everybody plays fish differently. Like, I just fillet fish. Uh, there's people that like to do anatomy projects on the fish, open up everything on them. Um, there's people that pick off every single piece of meat on the bone. Uh, I don't know, people just do everything differently, but it's pretty much like any fish. All fish are pretty much the same. So I always cut like here, behind. It's hard to see at these angles because I'm doing this by myself. Uh, like here, kind of, at an angle. Maybe a little no back. Have issues. Oh, yeah, I got this back on my GoPro now, so let's see if that improves the audio. Hopefully, uh, yeah, kind of like here. Cut into it. They got some good scales on them. Make a little cut. Try not to go too deep here because this is where the stomach is. Like you can avoid cutting into it. It's a pretty good thing. But cut down. Get a little cut going right here. Yeah, I definitely think I just heard myself cut into the stomach. knife isn't as sharp as I would like it, but it'll do. That's a 
bunch of damn scales right there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they also, the snook also got me back for killing it, kind of. I can't, I got sunglasses on and I'm looking at the sun. I don't know if you can see my finger or not. Uh, the other one bit me that I grabbed it from with my friend. And, of course, my elbow falling on the rocks the other day, so. The snook are also striking back. <laughs> but, not too bad. It's gonna feel really good once I get this, uh, these cuts wet. I'm sure I'll like that. Then you do a little cut down the tail. Scales out of hell. Probably need to run it. Because the bones and scales really uh, dull down the blade. Then you come back. Ooh, that was kind of bad. You hear the scales right there? I don't know if there's like a scaler thing or not or whatever. I never really used it, but uh, you could probably do that if you wanted. Might make it a little bit easier. That's it. I don't. I don't. Know. I only keep snook every once in a while. They're actually. I always feel really bad keeping snook for some reason. I don't know. Like killing snook, I always feel really bad. Like snook and swordfish. Swordfish because they're like a big damn animal. <laughs> and I just killed it and I'm going to eat it. And I always feel bad for them. Um, I don't know, it's really weird. Does anyone else get that kind of feeling? Because like I only try to keep what I'll eat. Or if like someone else is on the boat they want to eat, then that's fine. But I'll fish, I try to let go if I'm not going to eat it. Okay, so got kind of like a section all sides. And then now, I want a little bit high right there. Need some meat, but it's all right. And then you just cut down the feel the bones along it and just kind of cut down it. It's much easier to like show in person than this because it's kind of hard to see. I remember one guy, like, I used to, I like, I don't know if it was really working, I kind of just fished with them and they like paid me money. But, uh, really nice boat, so that was pretty cool. It was like 41 Viking. And I remember the one time I was like filleting up these dolphins that we had caught. I mean, they weren't like giant ones at all. And the guy was like freaking out because I like left some meat on it. I was like, dude, it's okay. But, like, I don't know, I don't go all like surgical on it. I mean, there's some meat there, yeah. But, it's not like the difference of a meal, kind of. Here, I actually got it right where I'm kind of going down the rib cage of its stomach. And hopefully, I don't get any bones, I don't think. Good chunk of meat right there. A uh, little bone right there I can feel. But we're, we'll worry about that later. So, I mean, I've watched a bunch of people do like filleting kind of deals. One thing I don't see anyone ever say or do, leave the chunk here that you just took off. Flip the fish back over and lay it back on it. So like this, this is the second side I actually think is the hard part before doing this. Definitely got some kind of injury right there. Because uh, if you don't do that, then uh, you can see, hopefully you can see, 
See how it's like angled? And that makes it a pain in the ass to cut down. So this way, it at least helps cut the angle some so it's a lot more flatter and it makes it much easier to cut. So I'm imagining this part, I'm just gonna fast forward through just showing it real quick. Also one thing helps with all fish is to keep them really cold. So if you like start filleting kinda and then uh, the fish gets warm, it's not a bad idea to put it back in the cooler. And uh, get it cold again, because then once the meat gets soft, it, uh, it's a lot harder to uh, cut up. But we doing all right. Maybe it did just go an open step. We got two nice clean fillets right here. And uh, next thing we're gonna do is take the skin off the back. Because especially with snook, uh, it tastes horrible if you don't take the skin off. So uh, these fillets are kind of soft right now, so I'm gonna put them back in the cooler for a few more minutes and it'll harden them up a little bit and then we'll just pull off the skins a little bit so now they're a lot, uh, <clears throat> they're not quite as soft because this actually makes it matter for this part. So now to take the skin off and once again, just like every other fish, I always start like a little bit, you want to start on like the tail side, uh, this is where like the stomach would be up here. Uh, all you do, go in a little bit. It's not so much cutting, you kind of want to just pull the knife along. And like this, I mean, I still mess it up every every once in a while. Wouldn't be surprised if I do it now. Uh, some people can get it right against the dam, like right there. Like you kind of want to angle your knife more so that it's like you're just kind of pulling it along. That way it won't uh, cut through like I'm about to do right there. So you just come up a little bit, restart. Okay, not the worst, missed a little bit here. So, I could have been like maybe a finger if you add it all up, but I'm not too worried about that. But uh, yeah, that's one side of the skin off. Skin I'll throw in, that doesn't work. That usually just sinks right away and it shouldn't uh, do anything. So, there's one nice hunk of meat. And now, do the exact same thing on the other side. A little bit better. Here I kind of missed some, but if you flip it over, it's probably some red stuff like this. This will actually make it taste a little bit fishy, and uh, once I'm like uh, preparing it to uh, cook, uh, I like take that out. But as you can see, all fish, once again, have this bloodline along it, and if there is a fish that doesn't have it, and there's a fish that don't have it, then uh, yeah, get the bloodline out. You kind of look. This one's kind of a little bit harder to tell. Pretty much right here. It's actually really a little weird. Bloodline's more on the bottom. Yeah, you can feel bones there. Oh yeah, it's kind of throwing me off a bit. Like the bloodline is really only on the underside and not the other side. Is that like a snook thing? I haven't kept a snook in a long time. So if that's like a snook thing, I'm not sure. But Cut down it. That's actually, I can feel a bunch of bones in that piece. I'm gonna cut that off. Oh, yeah. Now you got some nice clean pieces of meat. Also on that bloodline, there's usually some bones. And uh, clean this off a lot better. 
once it's up in the house, smaller knife and stuff. And then, uh, yeah, you can like cut it up however you're gonna cook it. You're gonna chunk it probably. Just chunk it up probably, what, like this? It's like a good piece. This could probably be like that. Just throw that on together. So we got some good chunks of fish. Pretty much dip the snook and egg. The seasoning we got going on is a uh, Idaho mashed potato. I guess it's like a mixed thing. Kind of has like a little breading on it. And we're trying out this random fish rub that I tried before. It wasn't that bad. And like some salt and pepper and stuff in there and to fry it up. Just like you would anything else. This would be the mangrove snapper. I'm gonna do it just the same. Wrap all of it together in there. Add it to the back of the snow. Well, the big pieces are, and the rest is mangrove snapper. And it cooks really fast. And that's like the key, personally, I would say, with fish cooking is. Not to overdo it. What was this on the back? Right. Curry rice. Curry rice. Curry and some rice. And then some potatoes. And we'll have ourselves a good fish dinner. Alrighty then, so. Now we've fried up some snook. Uh, I believe it's done. That's only, it's gonna take like a couple of minutes. And I'm telling you, the keys to grilling fish or cooking it in general is a short amount of time. Because if you overdo it at all, it's gonna be like tough and not good. And fish, almost all fish are supposed to be a, a little bit flaky. So that's the way I like it. So we got here a good chunk of snook. Uh, I put it on a paper towel, try and um, drain the water out. What the hell are you barking at, dog? Pick pit, pit towel off. Just gonna throw that on the ground. So, got a piece of snook. And uh, for me personally, I think fish should be extremely simple and not crazy overdone. Because I mean, you get in the restaurants and stuff, and to me, I, I, I think it should be like you taste the fish, because it's fish, otherwise it's just some kind of random meat you're eating. So I like to do like kind of light on any types of seasoning and stuff. And one seasoning I do use all the time for fish, any of the fish, is uh, this Everglades seasoning that I've been using it for, I don't even know how long, one of my friend's mom, which, uh, well, when we went to Marathon, <laughs> she, I saw her cooking with this and I was like, what the hell is that? And she's like, you can, I think now it's more widespread around. Uh, you can get it at like almost every Publix or I think when Dixie or something. But uh, really good stuff. Um, just use a little bit. I like to the eat. They make like a regular one, which is fine. And uh, yeah, you take this. Doing this one-handed. So hopefully, it, oh first, uh, some oil. So yeah, put a little bit of oil on there. Got some olive oil. And uh, I just like putting that on just so it kind of doesn't get crazy burnt. Totally should have brought a paper towel out of here for uh, my hands because now my hands are covered in olive oil. Gonna go get a paper towel right now. Okay, first before grilling, uh, if you haven't watched any of my gardening videos, which I'm pretty sure not a lot of people have because I think collectively the like eight videos I think I've uploaded have like a hundred views. Uh, I've been trying to do some like gardening stuff and like right here we got a nice little yellow pepper going. I don't know what these spots are. Uh, I gotta look that up, see like pepper diseases, but over here we have ourselves a basil. This damn thing turned into like, I'm gonna call it a basil tree because this thing got really big. But uh, yeah, I believe, I wanna say it's Greek basil. I don't really remember, but we're just gonna pull some of these leaves off you can kind of see and uh give them a quick quick rinse and throw them on this fish also look at this damn moon out tonight 
That's... I don't know if it's supposed to be the full moon now or if it's coming down from the full moon or like, I don't know what's happening with it, but the moon's pretty big, damn big right now. Gave these basil leaves a quick rinse. We got our olive oil on the fish. And we're just gonna plop these bad boys right on there like that. I should have let them chill on there for a little while and like kind of do a little marinate on them. That would be, that would be nice. So take a little bit of this Everglades heat. Don't wanna, like I said, don't go too crazy on it because you want to taste the flavor of the fish. Okay, so. I have a feeling, oh, the camera wasn't even pointing at it. I have a feeling, oh yeah, there's a little bit too much coming out, but I can fix that, rub it in a little bit, flip the other side. I think, I believe I brought this bottle to the Dolphins game I went to the other day, week, and I think it might have got wet, so it's like kind of stuck in the bottle. <laughs> or absorbed some moisture from when it rained down there, but yeah, nothing too intense. We got some of the Everglades, and now I like to put a little bit of this whatever garlic salt. Don't really think the company really matters. Overkind. Some of that on there. I actually have used the garlic salt a bunch on like fish and steak and stuff. I don't think it really ever adds anything to it. I don't know if it like burns off or not. I need to grow me some garlic cloves. That would be nice. Okay, so. All right, now it's time to grill this bad boy. This grill is a damn beast. It's a, I don't even know the like model or whatever of it. It's a like Weber. It's like, I guess it's supposed to be like a travel kind of grill thing, but this thing I've had, I don't even know how many years. And uh, the only thing I've had to replace on it was the stand because it like rusted out. But we've had this on the boat, on the sandbar, in the back of the truck, on the beach, freaking dolphins game, tailgating, no problem. Like everywhere, this grill is awesome. It's got those like little, kind of see right there tanks on it things a beast I just cleaned it up and now it's running beautifully so we got our fish right there I let it sit a little bit with the hopefully the basil leaf scent kind of sinks into it a little bit and got the oil on both sides and where's a good spot where do we like right there perfect boom and uh, yeah we're grilling also, another key to grilling, you gotta have yourself a nice, nice mixed drink. We got we got some rum and coke going, which I actually need a refill of. But yeah, also key to grilling. I feel like with fish, get it really hot. The grill really hot, right? I mean, I've had it on like high the whole time, but uh, I turned it back to medium. Ooh, that smells good. I like that. And then, uh, yeah, like I said, this is don't want to overdo damn fish. And I, I personally like putting it on, I don't know how long it's been, I'm assuming like 40 seconds or something. And uh, when the bottom side starts getting a little bit white, you can kind of see. And the meat's pretty white anyway, but it's kind of pink, you can kind of see. I like to get one side cooked, kind of. Come on and then flip it real quick like that, just to kind of get both sides cooked and that way it won't, it shouldn't hopefully stick to the grill. And also the olive oil. Wow, there's like no basil leaves on that side. I thought there was, oh well. They're probably gonna fall off anyway, but you could taste it once. It doesn't have to be there the whole time. But yeah, I'm gonna do this for a couple minutes and then We'll see the finished product. All right, so pretty much in the time it took me to reload my rum drink, the fish has finished. And also, I guess my mom has already started eating the fried snook and snapper while I was out here. And she said it's damn delicious. So we're gonna have to get in there and finish up some of this damn fish. All right, so then I guess this would be the finished product. We got our grilled snook right here, fried snook right there. 
mango snapper fried right there. We got uh, some nice rice, which if you ever go to Japan, which my mom did, brought back a rice cooker. Uh, you, I'm assuming you can buy this in America, I don't know. Otherwise, definitely buy a rice cooker. This thing's the bomb. There, we're gonna put some of this nice curry right on top of that, and then we're gonna be eating good. And my hand is finally starting to heal up a little bit. Okay, so that's how you cook and clean a snook. And I guess it would be generally any other fish. And I really don't do anything all that different with whatever fish I cook. It's generally the same thing. Though, I will say swordfish, we do do a different kind of recipe thing with it, which I don't know because I follow directions with it every time. But uh, when I catch a damn swordfish for once and uh, don't get skunked on all these swordfish trips, uh, I will show definitely how to do that. So uh, yeah, hopefully you guys like that. Let me know in the comments. And yeah, pretty much everyone has their like own kind of way of cooking fish. And if you have anything on how you like to do it, tell me, I would like to know. I like learning new stuff from people and getting other people's ideas and see how they like cooking fish. So how do you like to cook your fish? And I guess say which kind of fish it is. If it's snook, let me know if there's a different way you like doing it. And I need to go catch me some more damn fish and go eat them up.